Labor Day. Um, today happens to be the um, Friday, the sixth day of, of November, and um, I'm, I, among, I'm sure you agree with me, we're so glad to have the, all this election turmoil almost over with and have almost a, a president that's going to be officially nominated today and um, recognized today. Personally, we, we need to pray, too, for our president. It looks like it's going to be a new one. We need to pray for him. He faces a lot of uh, challenges and um, ch changes for this coming four years. And so, um, once again, our democratic way of government has proven itself as a valid way of governing, a valid way of living. Um, and we have to pray for wise and decisions from a new uh, president and staff for the good of all our people of the country. We ask God's blessing upon him. And um, today is also the 69th anniversary of the dedication of St. Paul Church as a cathedral. Um, back in 1951, this place was designated, this church was designated as the cathedral, the mother church of the Diocese of Yakima. Newly formed it was then. And um, actually, it was under Bishop uh, Joseph Doherty, the first bishop of Yakima. And it was the word cathedral comes from the word cathedra, which is the um, means the chair of the bishop, the seat of the bishop, his official place of teaching. And it's such a privilege to be a cathedral. I hope I know you all recognize this and all realize this, but it's a wonderful thing to be the mother church of a diocese in union with the Lateran in Rome, which is the Bishop's Cathedral, the same as Notre Dame in Paris, or the Great Cathedral of St. Patrick in New York. We're, we're equally a cathedral, the center of our bishop. There's been seven bishops who have um, presided here from this cathedral, Bishops Doherty and Power and Walsh and um, Skillstead. Cardinal George was here as first, we know that too, and Bishop Sevilla, and now Bishop Tyson. And I've been privileged and, um, to serve under all seven of them, as a matter of fact, because I came here only a few years after the diocese was formed in 1958. So I've been here under all the bishops, not in this cathedral parish for every bishop, but in the diocese, a member of this diocese. And I feel... A, extremely blessed. When I came out here from Boston after ordination, my classmates thought I was crazy coming out here in this wild wilderness in the West. And um, I noticed that like five years after I was ordained, around 1963, I went back and I was rector of the cathedral, pastor of the cathedral that parish then, assigned then, and um, all my classmates wished they had come too. But it's really a joy, as I've said so many times, for me to be the pastor of this cathedral, particularly this time for the last almost 33 years. Um, and uh, we pray for all our, our bishops, living and deceased, and we ask God to bless our diocese continually. This Sunday um, is Pledge Sunday for the annual Catholic Appeal. I can't overstate the importance of this appeal for the good of our diocese and the continued ministry of our bishop and his diocesan staff. They have their responsibilities as I do for this parish, they do for the whole diocese. And the bishop himself does. He's the pastor of the central, seven central counties of Washington state. And he depends upon us, every single one of us. And my wish is my hope would be that every single person in this cathedral parish would have a participation in his ministry and work. Um, that just doesn't mean just because this Sunday's Pledge Sunday, it's over. You can send in your pledge at any time, and I hope you will. Um, we thank um, Priscilla Parmentier for her marvelous work for so many years in coordinating all the work of the annual Catholic Appeal for our cathedral parish. She threatened to resign a couple of years ago, but I said, well, please wait till I resign, till I retire. And she so generously agreed to 
to do that. And I'm so grateful to her, and our parish should be too, for a marvelous and a, and a most wonderful and expertise uh, working and running of our annual Catholic appeal every year. So this Sunday is Pledge Sunday, but there's not the limit when we can give our donations. So please have get those in as soon as possible so we can get this drive over for our own parish community. Every person a participant in the ACA. This Wednesday is Veterans Day, and we owe so much to so many for keeping the standards of our nation and our traditions so alive and protecting our freedom. And we want to welcome at this uh, having a special mass at 11 o'clock on Wednesday to commemorate Veterans Day and to honor and pray for all our, not only our veterans, but our active duty people and reservists too. So all the military reservists and active duty people, as well as our veterans, are welcome to this special mass, which we will offer for them on Wednesday at 11 o'clock in our cathedral. It's our usual morning time, and we hope to have it streamed throughout the diocese so that we can continue this tradition of honoring all those who are brave servicemen and women who serve our country and have served our country so valiantly and wonderfully over the many years and all the wars we have been in in so many times. World War II, there's still a few of you here, and we, the, the, great, the greatest generation referred to, and then our Korean veterans and our Vietnam veterans. Um, we have uh, our veterans from um, um, the Iraq and the, and the Afghanistan conflicts. This year we're going to miss um, Bud Stillwagon, who was always a great protagonist for celebrating Veterans Day. But we know he's up with God and celebrating up in heaven. He's probably wearing his Navy uniform, just as a sign, as he always did here, too. Um, Thanksgiving is coming up, as we know, not too distant future. And um, unfortunately, because of the, of the pandemic, we have canceled our um, Wednesday evening anticipated service. We usually have an interfaith celebration of Thanksgiving with the Yakima Association of Faith Communities, but this year it's going to be canceled, and uh, we're not going to have that. We will have Mass on Thanksgiving Day at 9 o'clock. The reason we're going to change it to 9 is because football games come on, and it kind of gives us a wonderful beginning of that beautiful Thanksgiving Day when we gather to thank God for all the blessings and favors that He gives us so generously. We can't have a dinner either for people like we always had in our parish in the past, I'm sorry we can't. I apologize to all those who used to come. It was a wonderful celebration. And it, it participated, so many people participated in the pre preparation of it and, um, and the fulfillment of it. Um, and Will Chichenoff was the really kind of the head sponsor of it, the workforce and his family. But all of you who did this in the past, we hope to resume again next year presuming the pandemic is gone, and um, but I'm sorry we can't have that dinner for you this year. But we will have the Mass at 9 o'clock on Thanksgiving Day. Today, um, it's my pri privilege, really, to celebrate um, Mass of Christian Burial for Robert Tetro, with, um, one of our parishioners. His wife, Michelle, as you've known her as a uh, Cantor, and she's always so willing to lend her talents and her, her voice. But we pray for Robert, her husband, and we pray for her family, the children, their children, that they might be given the strength to persevere through this difficult time in their lives. The Cease Priest Mass, by the way, is coming up on the Tuesday, the 17th of November at 5.30 in the evening. Our bishop and... Um, Priests will celebrate this Mass, the bishop as principal celebrant, assisted by our diaconate community and some prayers for all our deceased clergy, bishops, priests, and deacons. And we ask you to come and join us to show your backing also and encouragement 
for all the priests that we hope will come and join us for that Mass. I don't want to keep this very long today, but I want to thank uh, Knights of Columbus again for their marvelous continued work and their help on weekends at Masses, signing people in and making sure things go smoothly. Again, we remind you that when you come to the cathedral, you need to have a mask. And please bring your own. We're kind of running out of our supply, but and we'll continue to have them. But bring your own mask and always be mindful of that social distancing, which is a part of the preventative efforts that we're making during this pandemic. So we really encourage you um, to come with us at that the priest meet. Uh, the, <laughs> The deceased clergy mass on the 17th of um, November, but also we encourage you to come and join us on weekends. All the masses are, are open for, and we can all use a little more room, but we have a little more space than we need, so there's plenty of room for extra people to come, but you're not obliged. Remember that. Our bishop has dispensed us from the obligation during this pandemic, and we're grateful for that. Don't ever feel obliged to be here. But if you want to come, please join us, not only for the weekend celebrations, but also for our weekday masses, Monday through Friday at 11 o'clock in our cathedral. And today, as we celebrate God's goodness and we think about during this month of November, all those who have died, we raise our voices and our prayers and thanksgiving to God for the so many blessings he gives us every single day. For our military during this month, active duty, veterans, retired, all that, and for who make, who, to whom we are so grateful as a nation, we pray for, as we mentioned before, for all the priests and bishops and deacons who have served and who do serve so valiantly, really, in our diocese. And we thank you and we bless you today in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.